It's a pleasure coming your way again this new week. It's Yusuf Yaqub Fise with the moment of truth. Thank you so much for being part of this program. The Lord bless you. The Lord multiply your joy in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this great opportunity to share your word with brothers and sisters, with even enemies, with as many as are willing to hear your word. Lord, our generations, our nations need your word. We ask that this your word will bless us, bless our homes in the mighty name of Jesus. What a marvelous moment we have again to share the gospel truth with all of us. We we're here last week with you. We talked about the need to relocate mentally, physically, as the Lord permits you. Now, we notice that the prodigal son had to return home because he discovered that disconnecting from his father brought a lot of pains and injuries to his own life. We thank God he never perished in a strange land. He returned home. This week, we're going to be talking about Two blessings that God has given to us that we most often neglect as nations, as communities, as families, as individuals. And so the topic for this week is don't break the hedge. Don't break the hedge. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 8 says, He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it, and whosoever breaketh a hedge a serpent shall bite him. Wow. We're going to be talking about hedge. The importance of the hedge in our life. What is a hedge? A hedge is a protective membrane. It could be physical. It could be spiritual. And we're going to look at them from these two dimensions today. A hedge. Most homes are hedged of from intruders, from those who want to trespass. And so also there are things, blessings that God has given to us that serve as hedges, but we often neglect them to our own perils, to our destruction, to our pains. But what are those hedges? We're going to be talking about two elements that are very important. Number one is the elderly the aged amongst us. We'll look at them as a hedge. It's a great blessing when God blesses your family with an elder, with an elderly person. Even though most societies today do not care about this segment of our own communal lives. As soon as they serve, they retire, they're forgotten. We're going to be looking at what are the dangers? What are those things that befall a society, a family, when you neglect this very important blessing in your midst? Then the second element is the family. The family is a hedge. It's a blessing to have a family. To have a family. And once that hedge is destroyed, is broken, societies wriggle through pains. And so today we're going to quickly look at this. The aged, the elderly, are citizens who have served, who have worked very hard to lay solid foundation for our progress, for our present progress and development. But they are most often mocked, disrespected, thrown aside, and nobody gives attention to them. In fact, when you look through the pension system and processes of many countries and many societies, when you look at the reward system of many societies, you would understand why so many societies are not moving forward. I don't want to shock anybody today, but that is the fact and that's the truth which we've come here to talk. Most societies that are well-developed and coordinated the secret of such is based on the way they relate to the aged, to the elderly, to the senior citizens. That determines 
how far a society a family can go when we mock the elderly the senior citizens we end up receiving curses every mockery of senior citizens will result to curses and destruction I give you a simple example of something that happened in 2 Kings chapter 2. Elisha, an elderly man, had already taken the mantle from Elijah. And he was to become the father of the nation. But we're told in verse 23 to 25 that some young boys came mocking this elderly man. He cast them and a bear appeared and destroyed 42 of these children. A whole, dis a whole generation destroyed because they mocked the elderly. Gray hair is a crown from God. When people begin to grow old, they are blessings to your family, to your society, to your businesses. We don't throw them away. Any disrespect to the elderly one will bring in a curse to the family, to the nation. That takes us to another example that we can show. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 12, the Bible records that the sons of Eli were called and described as the sons of Belial, sons of the devil. Why? Their father was already old, having served God for many years. These children disrespected the voice of their own father to a point that the father lost favor of God. When you disrespect the elderly, you take them to a situation where they become powerless and weak, such that we no longer respect their voices. And then because they are not able to control us or tell us to do the right thing, we've neglected them. God also, who is expecting that the elderly will act properly, begins to disassociate himself from such elderly ones. And the result is what? A curse. The Lord said, because Eli and his children refused to honor him, he too will not honor them. And the curse was that in the family, in the lineage of Eli, there was not going to be an elderly person again. That's the most uh, stringent punishment ever given to any family. That you don't have an elderly person again. And so, if we respect the elderly and respect their voices, blessings come to the elderly and then it trickles down to the entire family and generation. God said for concerning Abraham, he said, for I know that Abraham would teach his children and his servants the commandment of the Lord. That was why God did not hide anything from Abraham. So how do you relate to the elderly people you have in your family, in your societies, in your nations? It's important. It's a hedge. The moment Eli was taken out of God's own favor, disaster came upon the children. They all perished in one day. And the father ended up also dying at old age without being happy. We will pay dearly for it when we mock our elders. When our policies mock them someone who has served for a long period and you're still sitting upon his own payment his gratuity his pension his medical bills and there are people who even keep them and force these elderly ones to come queue up some die while queuing up to collect pittance and you discover that those who do this do not end up well my prayer today for all of us that are listening who are in the position to respect the elderly remember there are hedges for us that god has placed there and if we respect them we get blessings and our nations begin to progress we want to talk about the family which is the second element the second blessing which i say that god is given unto us as blessings Beautiful families deliver beautiful children and beautiful citizens. Then you have beautiful nations, blessed nations.
progressive nations. But once the hedge of the family is broken, the serpent bites. Any disconnection from your family will lead to pain. We are told about the prodigal son, which we talked about in the last series. As soon as he got disconnected from his own father, he lost everything in life, including his senses, to a point that he was barely about to feed from what pigs were feeding on. Why? Because the hedge round him, the protection of the father was lost. When we sin, we do things that displease God, God removes the hedge round us. And then we are susceptible to the bite of the snake. Children are meant to grow and be brought up within a family. And when such families are not there rightly positioned to take care of the children, what you get is violence all over the place. In Malachi chapter 2, verse 14 to 16, God was so sad with the children of Israel that he said, you're dealing, you're breaking your covenant with the wives of your youths. Dealing treacherously with a wife of your covenant. Violence is prevalent in societies today against women, against children. And in turn, we expect to receive blessings and peace. It's not possible. God had to rebuke the men and said, You are dealing treacherously with the wives of your covenant, the wives of your youths. Infidelity has gone deep into the rubric of our families. And we think that the serpent will not bite. As soon as a man is unfaithful to his wife, to his children, the serpent bites him at place of work, in some businesses, in most of the things he does. Prayers are no longer answered. Why? Because God will not listen to side prayers. He said, that's why your prayers are not being heard. He goes on to say in verse 16, he said, God hates divorce. When violence comes in as a result of infidelity, unfaithfulness, what comes in now is physical fights, assault, battery, beating of children, beating of wives. And then the consequence is what? The woman begin to seek for way out, escape route. And the escape route outside there is still not an escape route because God is taking his attention away from that family. And what do we have? What do we have because that hedge is broken is a circle of malice, hatred. Children grow out of such relationships hating their fathers, hating their mothers, depending on who is the initiator of the breaking of the age. Because children will naturally ask questions. Where is daddy? Where is mommy? Why has she abandoned us? Why has he left us? Why is he not caring for us? Once they get the answer, that person becomes the target of their hatred. It's a vicious cycle, which must be broken. And so anything that affects the rubric of the family is breaking the age. It's breaking our age. And so we must live to please God. First, we say, the elderly must be taken good care of. Number two is that the family is sacrosanct. It must be preserved at all means. It must be preserved. Broken homes will lead to broken societies. Whether we like it or not, broken homes will lead to broken societies. Because the thought of God in Malachi chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, is that God is seeking for godly seed. Godly seed cannot be gotten in the brothels. Godly seeds cannot be gotten in, uh, in the market. They must be bred and be preserved within the family. What is the way out? Simply the way out is, a relocation, as we talked about last time. We must mentally relocate ourselves, physically relocate ourselves, 
we must go back to that invincible age that cannot be destroyed. That is Jesus Christ. You have to return. You must make sure the basis of your relationship with the elders and your family is formidable. And the only formidable foundation is that which was led by God even before the creation of this earth, and that is Jesus Christ. He is our refuge. He is our Ebenezer, the rock of help. When you run unto him, he says the righteous runs unto his name and is saved. So if you're facing some other situations, you must just come back, hand over yourself unto this great age that cannot again be penetrated by the devil, by the arrows. The nails penetrated him because of you and me. Now the nails will no longer penetrate his hands. No longer. Christ is there living for you to come and hand over your burdens. So the only way is to live within a family, the family of Christ, where you're given the protection, the grace to tolerate, to bear, where the fruits of the Spirit will increase so much. You have that peace, you have that joy, you have that love, the grace to bear and even carry the burdens of others. That can only be found in our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to pray for all of you. I pray for your families. We pray for the elderly in our midst that the Lord will grant us the grace to take better care of them so that we can all be blessed. Father, as many as repent of whatsoever they have done against the blessings, the hedges of elders and the hedges of the family you've given unto us, please forgive them. Our governments, our leaders, please give them the wisdom to be able to respect these hedges you have given unto us. And Lord, wherever we've suffered a lot of bitings of the serpent, we're asking today that through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, you will renew us, renew our nations, renew our societies, renew our businesses in the mighty name of Jesus. As many have surrendered their lives unto you, so they can live better with their families. Daddy, please have mercy on them. Restore them in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember, the prodigal son returned home. His father was ready to accommodate him. His life changed. Your life too will change in the mighty name of Jesus. Again, it's Yusuf Yakubo Fise. Till we come, you're where again next week in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Shalom.